Today's anatomy lecture is on the nose, nasal cavity, paralysis, sinuses, and the uh, nasopharynx. Okay. So, what is nose? Nose is a, in general, is a, it is an organ of smell. Okay. And it provides a, uh, airway passages for the respiration. Common. Is it the nose? Yes. <coughs> So basically it has two functions, isn't it? One is it provides the respiratory passage and the organ of the smell, isn't it? So the receptors of the smell placed in the roof, that is the upper one third of the nasal cavity. Upper means roof, isn't it? One third of the nasal cavity where the receptors of the smell located, isn't it? And <coughs> remaining part it is so this part it is lined by olfactory mucosa isn't it upper uh, one third isn't it so remaining part of the nasal cavity the respiratory mucosa okay so what is the respiratory mucosa the respiratory mucosa lined by the lungs Lined by pseudo stratified ciliated columnar uh -huh. epithelium. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Respiratory passage. So, say about the nasal cavity, isn't it? Then the trachea, lining epithelium of the trachea, pseudo stratified ciliated. Yes. Yes. Pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium, lining epithelium of the respiratory tract. Okay. So why it is called pseudo stratified? It's not the uh, above the two. Yes, yes. It's like so the epithelium always the simple and the stratified. Yes. Unilayer and the multilayer, isn't it? Though it is a single layer, it looks like multilayer okay. because of the presence of the nuclei in the different level. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Uh -huh. yeah. Though it is a single. That is why we are calling pseudo false, so pseudo stratified. False multi-layer, multi isn't it? Like this. Yes. So this is about the introduction about the nose. nose. Next is for the descriptive purpose, the nose is divided into external nose and the nasal cavity. Uh -huh. Isn't it? So external nose, what you are seeing from the outside. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. So remaining part, that is the nasal cavity inside. Isn't okay. it? So about the neck, external nose, only the externally visible part of the respiratory system, system. remaining inside, isn't it? Uh -huh. So only this part it is visible, the respiratory system, isn't it? So this is the root of nose, okay, and the ala, ala and the septum, septum. these are the external. nostrils, isn't it? Yes. So anteriorly there are two nostrils on either side of the nasal septum, okay. <coughs> so this is about the there. External nose. About the structure of the nose. So nose consists of the bony and the cartilaginous framework. Isn't it? So this is supposed to be the nose, isn't it? The nostril. Okay, root of the nose here. So it is composed of the bony part and the cartilaginous part. So this is a cartilaginous part, isn't it? So posterior to this, this is a bony part, isn't it? So, it is formed above by the nasal bones. So, this part, these are the nasal bones. Okay. And this is a part of maxilla. Is that it? Mm -hmm. So, this is a maxilla and the nasal bones. And this is a frontal bone. Okay. So, frontal bone. So, these bones form the bony part of the nose. Okay. Next is the cartilaginous part of the nose. So, it is having the... Uh, plates of the hyaline cartilage, which are upper and lower nasal cartilage. Okay, so in some book they have written the lateral cartilage and the greater alar uh -huh. cartilage, isn't it? So the upper and lower Down. nasal cartilage, cartilage. Okay, yes. so it is formed by the partly from the from the bony and partly from the cartilage. Yes. Is that is it's it clear? clear? What is the mixture? This part. Up to here. So this is the 
part of the maxilla bone. Isn't it? So this part, this is the nasal bone. Okay. Isn't it? From here to here, so this is a frontal bone. Isn't it? <coughs> Next is about the nasal cavity. Okay, so it extends from the external nares to the posterior nares. So it is the opening, external nares. From here, where the posterior nares. So where it posterior nose. So these are the self-like structures in the lateral wall of the nose, which are called the concave. Okay. So up to here, so this is the posterior nares and the anterior nares. So this part we call it as the nasal yes. cavity. Is it clear? So from here onwards the nasopharynx. Mm -hmm. From here to up to the uh, lower border of the soft palate, this part this is the nasopharynx. Nasopharynx and the nasal cavity up to here. Okay. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so this <coughs> nasal cavity it is divided into right and left half by the Six. nasal septum. Okay, nasal septum partition, isn't yes. it? Yes. Okay. And each half it is having the floor, roof, lateral wall and the medial wall. See here, this is the nasal septum, the nasal cavity. Okay. And this is a coronal section to the nasal cavity, isn't it? So this is the nasal septum. Yes. And the lateral wall is a two halves. So whole of this thing, this is a nasal yes, cavity. Yes. So it is divided by the nasal yes, septum yes. here, isn't it? Yes. So this this forms the roof of the nasal cavity and the medial wall of the nasal cavity, lateral wall of the nasal cavity, isn't it? On either side, yes. left and right. Okay. So the floor, roof, and the lateral wall and the medial wall. Is it clear now? Yes. So this is a floor, floor of the nasal cavity. <coughs> Roof of the nasal cavity. Okay, so the medial wall it is by the nasal septum. So the La lateral wall, isn't it? Lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so about the roof of the nasal cavity. So this part, this is the roof of the nasal cavity, isn't it? How it is formed? It is formed. so this part. This is the sphenoid bone. Yeah. Okay, and this is the ethmoid bone. Okay, up to here, ethmoid bone and the frontal bone. Mm -hmm. Is that it? So it is a narrow and it is formed behind forward by the body of the sphenoid. Is that it? So it is formed by the body of the sphenoid and the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. So here it is the ethmoid bone and the sphenoid bone. Okay, and the frontal bone. See here, isn't it? Front. So this part, this is the frontal bone. Okay. And the nasal bone and the cartilages. Isn't it? So this is about the roof of the nasal cavity. Okay. Next is the floor. Floor of the nasal cavity. So this is supposed to be the floor of yeah. the nasal cavity. Isn't it? So it is separate it from the oral cavity. So below here. It's a separate, so this, the floor of the nasal cavity, it separates the oral cavity and the nasal cavity, isn't it? So it is formed by the uh, maxilla and the palatine bone, isn't it? Hard, uh, hard palate, isn't it? We call it as the hard palate. So, it's formed by maxilla and the palate, palatine bone. So this part, it is from the maxilla, isn't it? And this part it is from the palatine bone. Okay, palatine and the maxilla. And this one is the soft palate. And this we we'll call it as the hard palate made up of bone. Isn't it? Okay. And this is the soft palate. There is no bone. Isn't it? So this is the floor of the nasal cavity. Is it clear? Yes. Next is about the medial wall of the nasal cavity, that is by the septum, nasal septum, isn't it? And it is the osteocartilaginous 
partition is a osteocartilaginous made up of bone and the cartilage. cartilage. So blue color, this is made up of the cartilage, cartilage and this is bone. the yellow in color, the bony part. Is that it? There is a certain <coughs> medial wall. Yes. Is that it? So it is covered by the muco periosteum. Is that it? Bony part. And it is formed by superiorly the vertical uh, or the perpendicular plate of the ethamoid bone. This one. Okay. And this bone, this is the omer. Yeah. Omer and the perpendicular plate of the ethamoid bone. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Nasal septum. So anteriorly it is formed by the cartilage. Isn't it? So osteocartilaginous partition. Nasal septum. Isn't it? Is it clear? Yes. So posteriorly by the umar bone. So this is a umar bone. Anteriorly by the septal cartilage. So this is about the nasal septum. Is it clear? Yes. So this is about the medial wall of the nose. Next is the lateral wall of nose. See here the lateral wall. So medial wall. Is that it? By the septum, nasal septum and lateral wall. So what are the things are in lateral wall? It shows three horizontal bony projections or self-like projections from the lateral wall. Okay. So these are the self-like structures in the lateral wall. Okay. So these are called the conche. Okay. So superior, middle and the inferior conche. Okay. Whereas superior and the middle concave from the ethamoid bone. Mm -hmm. These are from the ethamoid bone, whereas the inferior concave, it is the separate bone. Okay, shelf-like structure in the lateral wall of the nose. Okay, so this is about the concha. <coughs> and the cavity below the concha is called the meatus. So, this is supposed to be superior, middle and the inferior yes. concave. Shelf, isn't it? Yes, yes. Just below the shelf, here the space is there, isn't it? Yes. So this is the superior meatus, middle meatus, and the inferior meatus. Okay. And this is above the superior meatus, one recess is there. This is the spinoethmoidal recess. Space. Okay. So this is about the lateral wall of the nose. Is it clear? Yes. So in the lateral wall of the nose, Concave, superior, middle, and the inferior. Okay, and meatus below the uh, respective concave. Mm -hmm. So below the superior meatus, so superior concave, okay. superior meatus. Below the okay. middle concave, middle, middle meatus. Below the okay. inferior concave. So this part inferior meatus. Okay, and above the superior concave here one recess. This is the spino ethamoidal recess. Why these are important? So the, the paranasal sinuses, air filled cavity opens here. Okay, that is why these meatus and the recesses are important. Isn't it? What's mm -hmm. open? And for the slide it is there. Paranasal sinuses. Okay, frontal sinus, maxillary sinus, ethamoidal sinus. So it is nothing but a cavity in the skull bone cavities, air filled cavities in the skull bone, those are opening here, in the lateral wall mm. of the nose. Uh -huh. and, then, mm. yeah. okay. and so I told you, spinoethmoidal recess, isn't it? So it is the small space above the superior concha, call it as the spinoethmoidal recess, this part, isn't it? Okay. And the spino uh, next is the middle meatus, is, it is the continuous in front with the depression called the atrium here. Okay. So it's supposed to be small depression here, mm -hmm. anterior to this, isn't it? And the atrium, it is limited by the above, there is a uh, uh, ridge here. Okay. Above this depression, here it is the ridge, we call it as the aga nasi small depression, above that there is a ridge, that is called the agarnesi. Okay, and below and in front of the atrium and just within the nostril lies 
where we call it as a vestibule here. Small depression. Vestibule. Okay. Vestibule. The atrium. Okay. In front of the middle meatus and the aga basin. Okay. The concave. Is that it? The concave increases the surface area of the nasal cavity. Okay. And the recess and the meati receives the openings of the paranasal sinuses and the nasolacrimal duct. Okay. So this is about the concave. So due to this concave, you know, if it is a straight, what happens? The lining epithelium, the surface area will be less. Is that it? So, due to this presence of the concave, it increases the surface area of the respiratory mucosa. Why it is important? To humidify. Isn't it? Humidify. Mm -hmm. Air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. It provides the air conditioning media. Isn't it? So, whole of this thing, it is uh, lined by the respiratory mucosa. Isn't it? Yeah. So, due to presence of the concave, it increases the surface area. Mm -hmm. It increases the surface area. Okay. <clears throat> Next is about the recesses and the meati. Why these are important? So, the opening of the paranasal sinus and the nasolacrimal duct. This provides the openings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next is the spinoethmoidal recess. Okay. Spinoethmoidal recess. So, it receives the opening of the spinoidal sinus. Okay. Spinoid bone will be there, body of the spinoid. Within that, there is a air filled space that is opens here. Spinoethmoidal recess. Opening up from the uh, spinoid uh, sinus. Okay. Spinoethmoidal recess. And next is the superior meatus superior meatus, this part, what is this? So, it receives the opening of the posterior ethmoidal sinus, posterior, anterior and the middle ethmoidal sinus, group of the air cells, okay. So, the posterior one, it is opens here in the superior meatus, okay. And the inferior meatus, it receives the nasolacrimal duct. Exactly. So, this is supposed to be the inferior meatus. Okay. So, here this is the nasolacrimal duct. So, <coughs> this, this is the inferior meatus. Opens here into inferior meatus. Nasolacrimal duct. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Next is the middle meatus. This part. Isn't it? This is superior concha, middle concha and the inferior concha. Between the middle and the inferior concha, this space, this is the middle meatus. Isn't it? Below the middle concha, middle meatus. So, it shows the rounded eminence. Okay. So, rounded eminence, this is the bulla, ethmoidal bulla. Due to, there is a air filled uh, sinuses, I told. Isn't it? So, due to presence of that, it is showing the bulging here. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, anterior to this, here, there is a groove here, isn't it? In the uh, middle meatus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what are the sinuses opening here? So, the middle ethmoidal sinus. Okay. Above here, the middle ethmoidal sinuses opens here. Above the pulla. Okay. Superior to pulla here, the middle ethmoidal sinuses. Next is here in the group anterior part, the <coughs> frontal sinus opens here. Frontal sinus. Okay. So the curved group hiatus semilunaris here. So, so this part we call it as the infandibulum. Okay. So the infandibulum it receives the frontal and the anterior ethmoidal sinus. This part. Okay. So, this is about the opening and next is the here below the this hiatus here we have this point the maxillary sinus opens here. Okay. Maxillary sinus, frontal sinus and the 
homoidal sinus. Okay, so all are open here. Is it clear? Doctor infantibulum part from hiatus? Yes. So this is a group, isn't it? So here the anterior sinus, maxillary sinus, okay. And here the middle ethamidal sinus, sinus here, Three middle sinus. ethamidal sinus, okay. Sinus. And the anterior ethamidal sinus. Anterior ethamidal sinus, middle ethamidal sinus, frontal sinus, and the maxillary sinus. Three sinus. So oh. all these are sinuses opens in the middle meatus. Is it clear? Yes. Whereas the inferior meatus, one, that one. is the nasal lacrimal. Yes, isn't it? Yes. So this is about the meati of the lateral wall of the nose. So you should be perfect in this. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. No, not too much. So the inferior meatus, only one. Yes. Right? <laughs> so here, the spheroidal sinus where it is opens, here also one, isn't it? The spheroidal sinus, isn't it? Here also one, superior meatus. One, one, one remaining here. Isn't it? Okay. Like that you have to memorize. So this is about the lateral wall of the nose. Okay. Next is the lining of the nasal cavity. So the vestibule, this part, vestibule, okay, vestibule. Yeah. So it is lined by modified skin as a short and curved hair called the vibrissae. Okay, here, between it. And the roof and the upper part of the septum and upper surface of the superior concha and the spino ethamidal recess are lined by the olfactory mucosa, one third I told you, isn't it? Up to the superior concha, one third space. It is lined by the olfactory mucosa. For the olfaction, smell. For the olfaction. This receptors in. Yeah, receptors. Isn't it? So those receptors are present, okay, so that conveys the information to the brain by, by the olfactory nerve. Okay, by the olfactory nerve. So remaining part, remaining of the nasal cavity, it is by the respiratory mucosa. Okay. So upper part only. Up to yes. the superior meatus. Upper part. Upper one third of the uh, roof of the nasal cavity lined by the olfactory mucosa. Remaining the respiratory mucosa. Okay. In olfactory mucosa, the uh, receptors are present for yes, the smell. Sweet. Okay. So remaining part, Respiratory. the respiratory mucosa, that is the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Isn't it? Yes. Okay. <coughs> so this is about the olfactory mucosa. So these are the it's receptor really cells in the true. olfactory yeah, mucosa. Okay. Olfactory mucosa. So remaining, that is the, by the respiratory mucosa. Yes. Okay. Is it clear? Yes. yes. Okay. Next is the respiratory mucosa. So, pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. And so, olfactory mucosa, receptor cells for smell, that should, we should remember. Yes, yes. And the other Yes. Yes. Upper one third. And again, it, it will be taught in the histology. Histology, yes. yeah. <laughs> the, this slides about yes. Yes. yes, yes. In the histology, again, you will be taught. So, what type of receptor? Yes. So in the anatomical part, we have to have a general idea. Yes. Is that it? Where to where? Uh -huh. From the superior concha, roof of the nasal cavity, the olfactory uh, mucosa will be there. Is that it? The remaining part, the respiratory mucosa. So it is a part of anatomy and uh, the histology. So this is about the respiratory mucosa, lining of cilium, sugar study part. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. So the glands produce the mucus. Okay. So mucus glands are also there in the respiratory mucosa. So by this the moistens the air. Isn't it? And clears the airway. Isn't it? Air conditioning. Isn't it? So the air conditioner we are having the filter. Isn't it? Yeah. Filters like this. Isn't it? This gland. God made. Air condition, isn't it? Okay. Next is about the nerve supply of the nasal cavity, isn't it? So the nasal cavity receives both the sensory and the visceral innervation. The sensory innervation 
the olfactory mucosa supplied by the olfactory yeah. nerves. Next is the nerve of the general sensation are derived from the ophthalmic and the maxillary nerve. So the ophthalmic and the maxillary nerve. So again, the ophthalmic and maxillary from the trigeminal. Yeah, yeah. Is that it? Three parts, three divisions. Isn't it? And the anterior part, it is supplied by the anterior ethmoidal nerve, which is the branch of ophthalmic nerve. Okay. And the posterior part, it is supplied by the nasopalatine and the palatine branches, which are branch from the maxillary nerve. Again, from the uh, trigeminal nerve, maxillary and the ophthalmic. Isn't it? So, this is about the sensory innervation of the nasal cavity. Is it clear? Yes. Three nerves is uh, their tributaries. Yes. Sa same origin, uh, trigeminal. Yes. Yes. And next is the visceral innervation that is by the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So, the sympathetic fibers arise from the neurons of the superior cervical ganglia. Uh -huh. so superior middle and the inferior cervical yes. ganglia. Isn't it? So, in that, from the superior cervical ganglia and are distributed through the plexus around the arteries. Arteries supplying the nasal cavity. Uh, so, around the artery, the yes. formation of the plexus yes. and supplies. Yes. Isn't it? And mainly the vascular smooth muscle supply. Yes. Isn't it? The visceral innervation. And parasympathetic fibers arise from the neurons of the pterygopalatine ganglia. So, parasympathetic ganglia. Where it is situated? Pterygopalatine ganglia. Pterygopalatine fossa. Okay. Isn't it? So, what are the other parasympathetic ganglia? Vagus ganglia. Parasympathetic ganglia. Pterygopalatine. Similarly, the otic ganglia. Pterygopalatine ganglia. Ciliary ganglia. Submandibular ganglia. Parasympathetic ganglia. These are. Okay. So, the para pterygopalatine ganglia. Parasympathetic nerve fibers from the pterygopalatine ganglia. Keep in mind. Okay. So, maxilla bone will be there, isn't it? Maxilla bone. Okay, so in between there is a space. So, that space we call this the pterygopalatine fossa. So, in that fossa, the pterygopalatine ganglion is located. Fibers from that we are calling as the parasympathetic innervation, isn't it? Okay. So, it is the branch of the maxillary nerve. Okay, from the branch of the maxillary nerve. It relates to the pterygopalatine ganglia through the post, uh, ganglion. post ganglionic fibers supply the parasympathetic part, isn't it? So this is about the nerve innervation of the nasal cavity. Next is the arterial supply of the nasal cavity. The spinopalatine artery is the branch of the maxillary artery. Okay. Spinopalatine artery it is the branch of the maxillary artery. Okay, next is the alar and the septal branches. So, these are the branch from the facial artery. Yes. Okay. Okay. And the anterior and the posterior ethmoidal artery. Okay. So, these are the branch from the ophthalmic artery. Again, the ophthalmic artery, it is a branch of right. internal so, carotid. Yes. Yes, yes. First branch in the Skull, in the internal carotid is yes, yes. to first branch that is the ophthalmic artery. From the ophthalmic artery, okay, these are the branches. Cerebral branch? Yes, inside the skull. Yes. Inside the skull. It has four branches. Yes. First branch is the ophthalmic artery. Yes, yes. Internal yes. carotid. Okay. okay. Remaining the external carotid, it gives rise to uh, branches the in the right. neck region. The right. Yes, neck region. Yes. External carotid. Okay. So, this is about the arterial supply. So, here the anastomosis of all these branches takes place. So, it is highly vascular. So, in the small trauma also, we find the epitaxis, the nasal bleeding, uh, is that it? Due to rich vascularity, is that it? So, this part we we'll call it as the little area, uh -huh. little area of the nose. Okay. <clears throat> is it clear? Yes. Uh, 